I got to know. After last episode, you guys uh, spent some more time in this dream realm of, you know, that that was made uh, with, like, Disney's power. You counter the hags. You fought them way too easily, I think. I couldn't roll her shit with Rusty May. Thank God. Um, I was hoping, to be honest, that Benson would be butt naked by the end of that fight, but that's oh. fine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was, hey, I was be, hoping that, that her her rusty claws would just rip Benson's armor off. He'd just be a naked little babe. Hey, see, at that point, then she'd be fascinated by him. Yeah, right. Double edged sword. Like he's he's so muscular. I like that whole so fight Look at that ass on Kezrak rolling really well. I rolled what I roll natural seventeen on the dominate. Dominate. Yeah, been a completely different fight. Yeah. Oh. I I did not say it, but uh, one of the things that was rolled on Grimshaw when when he went in to try to dis- disguise himself as a, as a, as one of the hags, yeah, and they casted a spell on him, mm-hmm. it, it was polymorph. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, nice. that would have been brutal. Oh, was it baleful or just polymorph? Oh yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. So um, hags themselves, they have coven spells. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and they, they get a, a whole bunch of them. So uh, they, they, when they were all sort of chanting in tandem, that's what they were doing. Uh, but yeah, one of her, one of the spells that she got, so that, uh, that was the highest level spell she had, which is Baleful Polymorph. Oh no! And that's what she tried to. That's what she tried to uh, <laughs> tried to uh, do to do to Grimshaw. Yeah, that would just turn. Is it is it the same like a first edition? I mean, like it was like what crit fail you are turned into an animal permanently. Like, yep. Pretty much. Uh, for an unlimited duration, is critical fail. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's so brutal. Uh, but but uh, he he succeeded. So you know. Wow. Um, but I, I was gonna say, after after all of that, that brutal fight that the, they started off bad and you managed to pull through, and even seeing a devil, <laughs> just straight up leave. Yeah, he was just like fuck this. Uh, you, you guys have a chance to recover, and in in this time to recover, I want to know what do you guys think is beyond the gate. Mm. I want to I want to hear some theories back and forth. So, like you know, do you the the last gate went to the Mwangi jungle, right? So, like, do you think it's going to be similar to that, where it's going to be like somewhere like really far away, or do you think it's going to be like you know where, where, where where's your head? Where do you think this is going? Uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> Viva. Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make my personally. own elf gate with blackjack and hookers. Yeah, there you go. I mean, <laughs> all right. So the, the hunter gate took us first. to the jungle, right? Yeah. yeah. So so does so the dream gate will take you to where? Like, I personally, for me, I'd prefer it to be transdimensional. Like, it just takes you to a different. Like a, oh, a like demi plane or something. Yeah, I was gonna say a different plane. Exa- yeah, because that would be cool shit. But if it has to be, I, I will say it will, it will maybe take you far away. Like either way, I, I think that the idea of this gate is to link the entire or this part of the continent of Galarian, mm. the one that we're on, which I can't remember what it's called actually, but that it does stretch like all the way across it. So, I will say we're probably far again. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, so what, you're, you're thinking you go from, like, Avastan to Tianzhou or something like that? Like, uh, just, yeah, something like that. Like, something yeah. very far. <laughs> other side of the world. I mean, that would be wild. I'm gonna say the yeah. land of the Linorm Kings. <laughs> I want to go somewhere just, cold, just so I, like, something random. I'm on that, I'm on that train, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you're, you're on the same thought, thought, thought there. Do you want to know what uh, I think? Yeah. Hmm. What I think metagame wise, not metagame, in character wise, I think uh, old Grimshaw thinks that there's a Scarlet Triad base on the other side. I think that they've already captured, they're, they're trying to capture, you know, the other sides of the gates. I don't know how they're figuring it out, but I think they're trying to capture the other sides of the gates, so I think we're going to run into, like, some sort of, like, Outpost or fortress of some kind. I don't know. For location wise, like I'm, I'm thinking something cold would be cool. Yeah. But it, what if it like took you to, um, oh god, what the hell is it? The Eye of Abendego or whatever. The oh, the, the Eye of Abendego. Yeah. 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 Like what oh. if it just took you 
like in the pirate like area. <laughs> Gosh, that would be cool. What? Yeah, with it, that's the uh, the shackles yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. It's all down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could get down with I the mean, shackles. Be... I like a good pirate adventure. Yeah, suddenly this is One Piece. <laughs> the One Piece is real. <laughs> Hope everyone's ready for 500 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only the first arc. <laughs> hey, we, hey, we have that filler. Jeffrey. Lots of filler. Lots of filler. I, I, have, of I have a, filler. I have a, I have a, so we're we're on we're all on Zoom, but like pretend that I pull up a whole stack of paper. I have this, I have this much filler, guys. Don't worry, <laughs> we'll fill out 500 episodes. Yes. <laughs> here's a here's a filler of uh, Kezra, it's like a Kezra's um, a raid job or something that he did in the past. So we all have to make new characters for this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's get into you guys recovering now, as you guys have defeated these three hags and managed to impress a bone devil or something. Um, or maybe the hags just were were did not impress him. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, but the last thing you guys saw was the well, Kezra saw the last thing Kezra saw <laughs> was this bone devil a laugh, call them pathetic weaklings, and then disappear. I love it. Also, Jake, I gotta say, I love the name Rusty May. <laughs> Kezra realized that in the group. He goes, "The Bone Devil." I, I didn't notice him when we first walked in, but he was—he was in the corner, watch, watching the fight the whole time. He, he's gone now, but it seems he may not have been a true ally to these witches. Now their fighting makes a little more you sense. You can't now. really be an ally with a fiend. Well, you know what I mean. Not to. You didn't try to kill us with them. I'm not. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll say we'll count this as a win. I mean, they were tough, but we outlasted. How much longer am I going to be big like this? <laughs> oh, just a couple more minutes. Um, Kezra wants I to want start to do some looking around. Yeah, Kezra wants to start rifling through the hags. Stuff. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the hags, uh, they, 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 they mostly don't have much. A lot of, they, most of the time they just wear rags. They might have, like, some gold bangles or something like that. Um, but, uh, in this room, um, as you guys look around, um, uh, you clearly see in the center of the the bottom center of the room. I'm pinging here to mm-hmm. right next to Benson. Um, you see what looks to be a cauldron. Oh, mm. oh, empty mm. or full of if stuff. If you <laughs> if you detect magic, it, it it pings with magic. If you use detect magic, sure. Can I, I will try to identify. It. Uh, twenty. Uh, you are not sure. Hmm. Damn, is it a cult or? I did that with Arcana. Um, I would. S- yeah, if that was Arcana, um, I'll, 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 I'll say, it. I'll say it's a cultism since this is all witchy stuff. Damn straight, it is. Could also, be before a Benson goes small. Uh, I, I'll say crafting works actually. Yeah. Um, cauldrons are used for use for alchemy and stuff. So yeah. True. But uh, before Benson goes small again, I just want to be able to climb up on his shoulders and act like a howda on the back of him. He <laughs> 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 just stab somebody. I just want to shoot him in the head. But <laughs> same <laughs> exact be a perfect role. tag team event. Same exact role, except this time I got a twenty-two. Right. Oh, uh, nope, that is not enough. Can uh, I do a religion check? Uh, and religion will not be will not be useful for this. Re- but. Okay, so for occultism, uh, 24 on the cauldron. I'm afraid not. Damn. Crap rolls. Wow. Yeah, that was mm. shitty. Right, we can well, come I back for it. Uh, magic cauldron. Is it big? Yep. Yeah, just write magic cauldron in there. Uh, all right, uh, I'll throw uh, it in the bag of holding. It is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, still that. Um... Oh, quick question. Uh, the night hag is right next to me, right? Yep. So, 
don't they usually have a gem? Heartstone. Um, because I thought I rolled high, like that. Usually they have a crystal or something, right? Uh, yes, yes. So uh, as you and as you look through, uh, well, let, let, let me let me go through the, uh, a lot of the other stuff because oh, right, there's right, a right. there's a lot there's a lot going on here. Okay. Um, you find in here uh, a, a a table to the north side. Actually, it's right next to you, Elk. Mm-hmm. Um, you find a table full of books and papers and scrolls and things of that nature. Um, that you can I, I don't know if you'd be able to read them. Um, Grimshaw, I don't know if your glasses will still be active at this point. Uh, let me see how long the glasses last for. I don't know if it's minutes or hours. Yeah, yeah. Do they? Yeah, if it's minutes, I'll say no. But if if it's if it's a uh, for one well, hour, minutes for one hour. Oh, there we go. Wow. Yeah. Good. Um, okay, so you see, uh, you see that it's written in um, uh, mostly abyssal, but it, it looks to be a bunch of different languages. So you can interpret any of this, really. Wow. Um, most of the books, as you sort of flip through them, depending on how much time you take. Um, they appear to be uh, sinister text about the nature of the worship of Masahala. Hmm. Can I roll uh, If you check? would like to... You may roll religion check on Masahala. Hmm. Oh, there we go. 30. 30. Masahala. Uh, let me go... Ma- oh my gosh, this name is something else. <laughs> Mahasala, yeah, there it is. Use Mahasala. It in a sentence, uh... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mahath- Mahathala was one of Phrasma's servants, the Maiden of Mist, a prophetess who knew the endings of all things except her own. Interesting. Tormented by this one gap in her knowledge, Mahath- Mahathala first appealed to the Lady of Graves, only to be kindly declined. Uh, for to know one's own death is a grievous weight to bear. Driven by her obsession, Mahathala abandoned her duties and traveled to the river and traveled the river of souls. And thence, Phrasma revealed the truth of her death to her. The knowledge broke the maiden, and she fled. After many ages, she re- resurfaced in the court of Asmodeus, maiden no more, but now the dowager of illusions. Uh, so she is the queens of the night. So hags worship her. Okay. Um, so uh, her, I'll, I'll just read because she is a, a pretty short uh, thing here. So her edicts are become an arbiter of reality, reject conventional wisdom as falsehood, capitalize on the ignorance of others. <laughs> Anathema to her is become too invested in mortal affairs or refuse to hear a truth out of preference for ignorance. <laughs> okay. So you have to reject uh, reality so she's all about death. and capitalize on ignorance? Yes. Hmm. Well, it says, it says re- reject, we become an arbiter of reality. Hmm. Very specific. Uh, and then reject conventional wisdom as falsehood. So, so you know, people are just like, make good investments. Say fuck him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so her areas of concern are death, fate, and vanity. Um, so the, these books or these texts in particular focus on her association with death and vanity, not so much about fate. So you can see where their interest came in uh, when worshiping her. Um, the books are not magic, as you can go through many of them. They don't seem to ping with magic or anything like that. However, nine of them are worth, I'll just give you this, are worth 20 gold pieces a piece. Oh, oh. oh. Alright, so nine... A lot of money. Books. Uh, 20 GP each. Okay. I'm assuming a, a book collector yep. would love those. Yeah, so, uh, and it's mostly just because of their curious contents. A lot of it just seems to be, like, esoteric knowledge and, like, symbols and stuff like that, that if you... Uh, you roll pretty well in religion that you haven't seen, so this looks like the, maybe they were doing research or experiments. Um, the tenth book uh, is more robust and contains information on two divine rituals. One of them is Planar Ally. Hmm. The second is Resurrect. No. Oh. <gasps> Ooh. Damn. Uh, oh, Adelar's burned. <laughs> this... Never mind. <laughs> Do what? Adelar's body got burned, so. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, there's a sliver of him left. We can use this. The first one was spiritual ally, right? <laughs> uh, planer. A planer, planer, planer ally. ally. Neato. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this volume is worth 250 gold pieces. <laughs> Shit. That's a ritual, too. All right. Um, 250? Yep. 250 gold pieces. 250. Man, f- not reincarnation, resurrection. Yes, resurrect. Yeah, I forgot. I'm actually trained in Arcana. Could I take a look at that cauldron? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's right, you are. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so, oh, natural oh. eighteen on the die <laughs> oh. for uh-huh. a twenty-nine. Yes. Uh, it was a I. Yeah, yeah, that does it. Oh, uh, yes. So this is a bountiful cauldron. Oh. All right. Uh, let me read bountiful cauldron because it is awesome. Uh, to get in here, bountiful cauldron. This mid-sized silver cauldron is a is a boon within areas where access to fresh food is limited, where it can be commanded to fill itself with hearty and delicious vegetable oh. stew. That's cool. It can also be, it can also be put to a much greater use uh, in the pursuit of crafting certain items. Oh, when gosh. used to craft alchemical items, potions, or oils, a bountiful cauldron grants a plus two item bonus to the crafting check. I mean, if this thing produces food, Benson probably would have seen one before. Yeah, probably. That's yeah, I mean, you the, the, like, this looks familiar, and then you're like, oh fuck, that's what yeah. that is, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the uh, once per day is the here's the 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 active ability uh, three action command and interact. You stir the cauldron and it casts a fourth level create food spell, <laughs> filling itself with enough enough delicious vegetable stew to feed twelve medium creatures. Damn. Well, boys, <laughs> meat is unfortunately not back on the menu, but. <laughs> it is. It is. It does say delicious, though. It's not a plain stew. This is like a actual good vegetable stew. Potatoes, potatoes. Tons of tons of old bay in oh, it. Yeah. You know, really good. Spicy as hell. Boil them, mash them. Stew. I wouldn't stew. recommend you uh, mix up a batch of poison before dinner time, but <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's still pretty cool, though. No, it's awesome. Um, okay, so I'm the one who came across this, right? Because I'm the one flipping through and reading. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on. John, John, it's Cauldron. My bad. Yes, <laughs> at, at your size, John, uh, <laughs> Benson could just pick up the Cauldron and use it like a, a mug. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> oh, yummy stew! <laughs> this is the same. This is the same soup from Wind Waker. This is really good stuff. <laughs> huh. My power is uh, my attack power is doubled. What? It's awesome. Wind Waker rules, right, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Can you imagine? <laughs> Back to you, Tim, with the books. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like flipping through these books. I come across the, you know, obviously I'm just like, this is valuable. This is valuable, and I come across these divine rituals. And I am I'm reading through them and I come across Resurrect. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I kind of like you know, once again, I didn't know Adelar, um but, you know, I saw that he meant a lot to you all and I turn around and I say It seems the gods have played a very cruel trick on you all today. What I hold in my hands is a very rare Ritual. It is the resurrection ritual. Very few people get access to powers this great. I've heard whispers of it amongst my order. This is such a thing only being reserved for the most valiant of warriors who died before their time. The thing with this ritual, though, is that in order to resurrect someone, to bring back someone's soul to their body, it requires their body to be intact. I know, uh, I know Adelar meant a great deal to you, but it seems not even this magic can touch him now. If, uh, it's pretty ironic. Why would he put that in his will to be burned? I guess he wanted to stay dead, huh? 
But if one of us dies, this could come in handy. It's not guaranteed, for asthma knows when your time is up. But if it's not up, you could come back. I remember hearing a story about my great-great-uncle. I'm fairly certain he was revived on the battlefield himself. Did he fight in the war room? Uh, they fought everywhere. Hmm. Well, it seems to be quite powerful magics, but I just feeling, when you bring someone back, do they witness the other side first? Oh, yes. It's kind of, kind of one of those ideas that permeates your brain and Will they be changed when they come back? Of course. No one takes a trip down the river souls and isn't changed. I've heard of people, their personality shift. Maybe some part of their body isn't quite the same, a birthmark, a streak of white hair. The possibilities are endless. You don't go through something like that and are not changed. Well, oh. I hope I never have to deal with that. Yes. So, I think as a precaution... Tragic. I think as a precaution to be good if everyone maybe kind of wrote up a little note in their pocket of whether or not they want to get resurrected. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's figure it out now, so there's no questions later. I just wear oh, DNR. Yeah, DNR. Do not... <laughs> DNR. <laughs> bracelet on. <laughs> Do not resurrect. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking. It's like this entire talk about resurrection, and then it's just like the guy from uh, what was it uh, Pet Cemetery? Just Judd comes in and goes. Sometimes dead is better. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> going all the way up there. Oh, don't go down that road, now. That and Kesra, as uh, he as Grimshaw uh, describes the ritual, he's just like, let the dead stay dead. It's not. There's, there's lots of magic in this world, but there's no reason to play with the fate of our lives. And he he just kind of, like, looks a little down, thinking about that. And uh, he starts rooting around the room for the the piece that goes in the tree. That's what he's specifically looking for. Mm. Uh, so let me let me uh, let me do this first. So uh, Grimshaw, as you well, are like reading over this, and you notice that there's actually notes around the resurrect ritual. Uh, this one has been heavily annotated in Infernal, mm-hmm. uh, which which was was the language that she was speaking in the to the Bone Devil with. Um, this make the make. The notes here are making it apparent that Rusty May was having problems learning this ritual, but she was hoping to use it to bring the Coven's original leader back. That's what I was thinking. As soon as you said that, like I said about the annotations, I was like, they were trying to bring the other one back. Yeah. Yep. Uh, she, uh, you, you can kind of glean from some of the notes here that she did not like Kaleni, the night hag that you fought. <laughs> Just, I think you might man. run into some issues though, because I don't think night hags have souls. <laughs> uh, well, it, it does say here that she was having issues. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's wild. Well, I, I can I, I know for certain, uh, especially because well, Mark and I play Wrath of the Righteous, but like uh, if you if you like kill like a devil, uh, he he one goes back to his plane. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. if you kill him on his plane, so if you kill him in hell, he actually goes to the inner sanctum first. If the he if he goes there, then he dies permanently. Uh, Jake, it was demons. Uh, demons and devils don't like being uh, mixed up. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, it, it it appears that uh, there are some limitations even to hex. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Kezer, you were looking specifically for the dream stones that they have, or the the heart stones. Uh, I was looking for um, the stone for the tree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, you do find in a small box there are two stones. Um, both of them appear to glow with a um, 
not like dull, but like a like, like a like a faint magic. Like you, you do, you don't even need to det- detect magic to like see that these stones have like symbols and arcing sort of uh, like marks on mm. them, and they appear to sort of pulsate and glow. Um, they sort of a uh, one's a little bluish, a little purplish, um, but they sort of fade, fade in and out, and sort of glow vitally. Um, if you would like, I would like you all to roll um, occultism, arcana, to uh, to identify these. I was half expecting them. Roll uh, initiative. Terrible. Uh, guys. Roll initiative. Um, fuck yeah. Stones attack you. <laughs> the stones. Oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> the smack has been wrong. Terrible. Twenty one. Oh. oh. Uh, nope. So that was nice. Eighteen on the die on this one. Okay. So, uh, for occultism. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, 30, 30, 31. Yes. 31. Eight, uh, okay. So, yeah, 31. Sorry. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Yeah, so you look at these things and you kind of compare them and you realize that these are dream stones. Let me read to you what a dream stone is. These are dream stones. A dream stone. Uh, a dream stone is a disc-shaped object. That's the one that you know would fit. Uh, card with imagery or words sacred to Desna, be it her religious symbol, uh, a short prayer, or merely the shape of a single star. Uh, when you carry a dream stone, you find it easier to fall asleep. And you gain improved effects from the resulting rest. You always fall asleep within five minutes of lying down. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, damn. Um, I want that now. Lying down with the intention of falling asleep. Uh, so that, that means if, if you just lie down, you don't like just like <laughs> just get, like start snoring in five minutes. You sure this isn't just reason. ambient? <laughs> uh, <laughs> additionally, you only require two hours of sleep what? per day to gain the benefits of an eight-hour rest. Oh That's my crazy. god. Is it now, a consumable? Uh, no. Provided you have carried the Dreamstone for at least 24 hours oh. prior to resting. Wow. Dude, if this was real life, roll as initiative, because I'm getting that one. That's like, yeah. <laughs> as long as you... Yeah. As long as you carry a Dreamstone, you get a plus two item bonus to saving throw against sleep effects, which is also cool. I, I assume it There's applies a to just one person. Yeah. It's not like a Bora. Yes. Uh, but that one person is going to be the best watch you've ever mm-hmm. had. <laughs> um, so, the one action interact once per day. Uh, this is a meta magic meta magic interact. Um, it, if the next action you can, if the next action you use is to cast a spell of fourth level or lower that has the sleep trait or is associated with dreams, the spell slot is not expended. Damn. That's so if you have a if you have like the sleep spell sleep spell you know that, that's probably what this is intended for, mm-hmm. um, but if you have that you can burn this uh, not not burn it but you can use the once per day ability on it in order to not consume that spell slot. Jeez, it's incredibly good. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Who wants them? So, so but but so essentially, Kel could get his spell slots back in two hours. After twenty four hours of attunement, mm-hmm. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to you have to attune to it too. But that's that broken. Yes, freaking amazing. And there's two of them, right? There's two. Mark, you happen to roll high enough that as you look at the other one, you realize this is not the same thing. What? Hmm. This is a cursed <gasps> dreamstone. Oh. <gasps> Oh, no. You realize that the hags were having a little bit too much fun here. <laughs> oh wow! How deep? How deep do their nefarious acts go? Who knows? But a cursed dreamstone. A dreamstone can be uh, a dreamstone can be used uh, can become cursed if left exposed to creatures that corrupt sleep, generate nightmares, or otherwise prey on sleeping or dreaming victims. Much like night hags. Yep. Uh, a cursed dream zone seems to function as a normal dream stone until the bearer falls asleep or is forced to attempt a saving throw against the sleep effect. At this point, the person carrying the dream stone must attempt a DC 26 will save to resist the cursed effects. Jeez. I'm going to go down the list from critical success to critical failure. Oh, no. <laughs> 
so uh, let me. Okay, critical success. The character resists the curse entirely and experiences a vivid dream while sleeping that warns them of the nature of the cursed dreamstone. So you like so you you have a vivid dream. Nothing else happens, but you wake up and you're like, get that thing away from me. Get that mm-hmm. you, know, you throw it in the ocean. Uh, success. The character resists the curse, but they don't know what it is. They just that they. Uh, I don't. It doesn't even say that they feel it. It's just that they they sort of shake it off. Yeah. Failure. As long as the cursed character possesses the stone, they are fatigued whenever they wake from sleep, Ugh. whether natural or magically induced. And they take a minus two item penal minus two item penalty to all saving throws against sleep effects instead of gaining the normal bonuses from a dreamstone. Mm-hmm. Mm. Jesus. Critical failure. As failure, and whenever the bearer attempts a saving throw against the sleep effect, they get the outcome that is one degree worse than the result of their saving throw. That's rough. Wow. So, Elk, you sort of hold them, and you're, yeah. like, entranced, and, like, you know, you're drawn in by the blue one. In this, and the purple one, you see in it as this sort of, like roils around and the magic sort of like pulses out and you feel something in it that you're just that you need to just drop it yeah it, it, like i would say it's probably like he sees like kind of like Sar like sauron's like the eye like these tendrils of something like kind of like seeping into the back of your head and you can kind of feel it like and then yeah he just drops it immediately he just seems they were having a bit of fun do what? not touch that thing. What's wrong with it? It's cursed. It's much unlike, unlike the other stone, which brings pleasant dreams and gives you plenty of rest. This one condemns you to nightmares and fatigue. Do not yeah. touch it. That sounds awful. Yes. But and the- there's no way of uncorrupting it like is it just done uh there i th- there's definitely ways i i don't know of them uh but this is a also item level nine oh, so damn. okay <laughs> can you remove the <laughs> curse from Whatever, a cursed uh, item yeah. i believe you can that's a good question because I, I i believe you can uh the if you if you want to take the time to, to look that up go ahead but uh, i I, I, at, um, I, I, I did not do that homework recently yeah, if the curse okay. comes from an item or an external source, a success indicates that the target creature can rid itself of the cursed item, but doesn't remove the curse from the item. Oh. Oh. So, oh. So it's only. Oh. So it's a. Uh, it, if there's a curse attached to you because of an right, item you have. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm. All right. So no, it doesn't talk about removing the curse from the item itself. I guess not. Gosh. Okay. There might be Maybe there's a higher there. level <laughs> spell. <clears throat> yeah, like wish or lesser wish or something. That, yeah. Wait, check the heightened version no, because there, there, so, no sometimes height, heightened versions no heightened of spells version for remove curse. Heightening it only. Oh, uh, oh never mind. Heightening only improves your chances for counteracting. Yeah, it just makes it makes. I it love it when it says like you can use a wish spell to remove this. It's like okay, so we're never. This is never getting fixed. <laughs> yeah, right, right. yeah, you can use wish. <laughs> I, yeah, I always like when the solution in the textbook is like wish. You're like, what the I'm, fuck? What? If I get to that level, I'm never using a ninth level spell slot to unbat a rock. <laughs> <laughs> to one bad rock. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, it's at so. it's GM discretion. GM okay. discretion. It says but. curses typically can't be removed or transferred from the item, though at your discretion, either might be possible after the curse is broken. If the PCs manage to break the curse, the newly uncursed item could be quite valuable. So. Hmm. If you want to, um, you want to give us a oh. fun side quest to break the curse on this, then that would be a thing. But because then it'll, I will think about yeah, it. Yeah, because then it'll turn into a, a dreamstone, which I know valuable is pretty damn good. <laughs> and then you could uh, donate it to the House of Dreams. How cool would that be? No, we keep one no. for ourselves. Donate the other to the House of Dreams. <laughs> I don't know about that. Vince is like, that's not efficient. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> what would I'm, Adelar do in this situation? Okay. Yeah, he'd keep both. <laughs> yeah. W-W-A-D. Now listen, listen, Grum, I know you don't realize it, but you're being quite stupid right now. 
think, think about the money and practical no, use. No, fuck the money. I want it. <laughs> yeah, I, so, I imagine removing curses from items might t would take like an adventure and like a ritual or something. That'd be fun. But, yeah. Yeah. There's no like mechanical yeah. way to remove them. Is it? Yeah, when that tree was attacking, wasn't there one of those stream stones in it too, or it was, was removed? It? So, oh, it's, one? oh, that one. So yeah, Kazr. Uh, it says that. Hold on. Um, there was an empty slot. Remember? Uh, oh, empty slot. Okay, because I thought it had like a messed up dream stone in it or something. No, no, we we saw that there when. We, when we observed that there was a empty slot where so, where something had been removed from the tree, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it says a uh, uh, PC who succeeds at a perception check notes the disc-shaped indentation in the tree's trunk, about the size of a human hand. This indentation is the well, well, a proper place for a dreamstone, but you can figure that out mm -hmm. now. Um, but yeah, so you now know that you could go back and uh, put that in there. We could plop yeah. it in, and I mean, we could hey, probably all get it. Yeah. yeah, isn't that the point of it? Like, that tree basically takes away nightmares and gives us very restful sleep. So, Oh, dude, we should do that. Then we can take it out. <laughs> yeah, then we can take it out when we're uh, on our way out. And then it'll kill us. That's really sweet. <laughs> the second we fall asleep, oh. it just beats the hell out of us. <laughs> <laughs> As you take it out, it just grabs all five of you. <laughs> No, no, that's when we tie a string to it and uh, pull it out. <laughs> just... Oh, the classic Tom and Jerry. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll just read our dreams when we're sleeping, and it'll be like, oh, these motherfuckers, they're going to take my stove. And just flush us to death in our sleep. <laughs> it's mine now. You can't have it. Not again. Uh, yeah, so I think af maybe after like we're kind of done, uh, you know, you're describing the Dreamstone, Elkwood, the good and the bad, um, you can you can kind of see that um, you know as we're kind of searching through stuff uh, that Grimshaw looks looks uh, looks pretty hurt, um, and he he goes, yeah. As soon as we're done here, I think it might be good to rest. I uh, was very fortunate and didn't take a single blow that last battle, but I actually walked into that fight already down a lot, so I didn't. I I have a, a tendency to get ahead of myself. It's only by Milani's grace that I've made it this far. But I feel like my luck might run out one day. You know, it's funny, our friend Adelar had that same problem. <laughs> <laughs> They're really common. Like wow. <laughs> He's dead, Benson. He's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Move on with it. Let's flash back to the time where Tim ran dead. <laughs> Whole ass into a room with a manticore with 15 hit points. <laughs> <laughs> or the skeleton blender and said, Watch this. The, skeleton the classic blender. skeleton blender. Watch this, guys. I got this. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I, truly, I truly don't blame Tim, actually, for the skeleton blender thing because that, that, that went on initiative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was all initiative. It was still yeah. funny, though, because he's just like, very he's funny. cocky. He's like, I got I'll, this, I'll never guys. regret that. I'll never regret just bombarding you. I can't. I, I remember anyway. the exact moment where Tim took one hit, and he's like, well, I'm going down. And the, just the blind rage in my mind. It's like, you had 12 hit points, and you ran into the room. Uh, all right, so... Uh, Dreamstone, you're, you, you want to go put the Dreamstone in the dreadful, in the dreadful, t dreadful was tree? Was there anything else yeah. in this, uh, was there anything else of, of note loot-wise? Can we rip all their heartstones out if we want? Well, uh, I the has a heartstone. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's only, it's only her. Um. These aren't technically night hags. Just the one is. Uh, mm. she is. Uh, Kaleni was, yeah. Now she's a dead night hag. <laughs> yeah, she's dead. Um, oh, I need to see. Yeah, do you have to fish around in there? Like, do you just? <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah. Go I'll, um... All right, now we'll pop her open. All right, use the star knife. Uh... Just... <laughs> Surgical. Just light her on fire. <laughs> okay, so it says. All right, so she does have hearts in in her 
character sheet inventory. Um, I can tell you this because I, th- I I I think you guys rolled well enough the last time, but um, so this gemstone grants us wear a plus two item bonus to saving throws. Very very cool. Mm-hmm. Each heart stone is powered by the spirit of a, of a specific night hag. If it's separated from her for 24 hours, or she's been dead for 24 hours, it becomes a non-magical gemstone. Okay, so it only benefits so, a night hag. It benefits no. a, it'll benefit some one of us for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Oh, just for 24 hours. Okay. Yep. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it just is granted its wearer. Whoa. So, oh. so she's dead, so... What? We have 24 hours to speed run this entire adventure. <laughs> well, I mean, after we rest, it'll be eight 22. hours out. Of that, so. 22 hours. But, yeah, but so is it on, like in her chest or something, or is it kind of like suspended in front of her? Like, I, uh, I just... no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it's, uh, it's very, not crudely, it's, um, in, in the most Hellraiser way possible, like her, uh, her, her, like uh, her, like solar plex bone, mm-hmm. like her sternum, I was thinking is that. like split, is like split there, and then you see this like gem like oh, yeah. lodged in there. Oh, yeah. he, uh, so you do have to rip that thing. Oh out, yeah, yeah. Elfwood does. He cuts it. He basically cuts it out of her using the cold, yeah. cold iron. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So just surgically, just severs right out. Yeah. Seek. Um. Admires it. Yeah. So, so you do have a Hearthstone. So, do you guys want to do roll offs for for any of these items, or are you guys just going to hand them out? You know, I really want the other Dreamstone, but it will be most beneficial on Kazra. Yeah. 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 As Kezra, nifty as it is, it's, almost Kezra wondering benefits the best from it. Kazra, it's like, I don't know. This stone seems like it belongs here. Part of me doesn't feel like it's right to take it. Like, belongs in this way station. Wow. I'd already Leave it so in the tree, proud. then. That's very big of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have Speaking of big, to... can I, uh. <laughs> can yeah, I get my it, regular token back? Yeah, it took us like 10 minutes to identify oh, magic yeah. items, so. You're, def- you're definitely. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah that's right. I actually like the idea of leaving it with the tree. Yes. I mean, Seems I, like when we came through here, made this place certainly wasn't pleasant to be beaten by a tree. So I'm okay with being And uh, Benson, Benson will uh, mention as we get close to it. I do think Anilo would be proud of you. Whatever, just get the stone back to the tree. And the gather goes and lays down on a bed. <laughs> Alright, so uh, as you go up and you take the the disc shaped stone and you place it in, it sort of like as you as you as you touch it to the to the slot, it sort of like slides itself in. It just sort of like and it just clink plops in, and you can see that the tree sort of, like, relaxes, almost. Hmm. Just sort of, whew. And this willow tree now, it just sort of gracefully sort of drifts in the wind that's, uh, that, that little, very light wind in this room. Um, and you feel all, all the sort of dark energy that was in here just sort of kind of drift away. Um, hmm. The night hags did quite a number on this place, but you 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 feel feel pretty confident that the, that that this place is uh is, is not a will recover. Mm. Um, so as you put the uh, dreams as you put the dreamstone into it, um, anyone sleeping on one of the six beds arrayed around its roots will gain the ben- gain the effects of a dreamstone placed in its trunk. Yay. Nice. So all of you. All of you will now get the effects of the Dude, as long as we're at the Citadel, I think this is where Benson's going to sleep just about every night. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just run down here to sleep. <laughs> yeah, for two hours? Yeah. If I could sleep for two hours... Dude, that would be amazing for me. Yeah. That'd I was afraid so you are going to be like, and you slide the stone in, it, it ruffles the tree, and then you see the Dark Souls health bar pop up, <laughs> the wrathful willow. <laughs> Yeah, Kevin's like already trying to fall asleep when you put that stone in. He's like, 
I'll get some rest. <laughs> yeah. uh, for the cursed one, is it just as long as we hold it, or could it be like in a bag of holding sort of I situation? Think it has to be invested. So uh, it's. Okay, so yeah, as long as we um, keep it somewhere where we're not investing it, because it might be good to have it, like, in case we do encounter a way to remove it, then we have our own uh, stone. Okay, so like, uh, a, a cursed dreamstone seems to function as a normal dreamstone until the bearer falls asleep or is forced to attempt a saving throw against the sleep effect. At this point, the carrying the car- the person carrying the cursed dreamstone must attempt the will save to resist the cursed okay. effect. So, so as long as it's not on you when you fall asleep, you're fine. If you so if you just put it in the corner of the room, you're good. Yeah, I'll say like we'll, we'll just wrap it up in like some of the tattered cloth of like one of the hags, just so it like we don't touch it. And yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, put it in the bag. So, uh, but um, <laughs> uh, uh, um. But yeah, so Elk does that. He's also holding on to the Night Hag, uh, the Hearthstone, as well. Since oh yeah, yep. yeah. So he's kind. Of- well, for well for 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 to, after you sleep, twenty two hours. Yeah. Uh, you you will. Uh, I'm gonna lightly keep track of that. I'll be honest with that's you. Fine. But, uh, no, that, that's fine. But that's completely fine. It's just that like he's he's kind of just holding on to it no matter what. Like he's. Yeah. I've invested in it. You know, like it's kind of mesmerizing, and the fact that like it was pretty much eliminating a Freddy Krueger, <laughs> like yeah. creature. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Freya, uh, Freya, Freya Krueger, because Night Hags are female. That's true. Um. So you guys sleep for. Uh, if you don't do anything else, you go to sleep. You sleep for two hours. Nice. Yeah. Um, Should we still have the, full watch or no? I mean, I don't. It's two hours. That, that, that's up to you guys. Yeah. yeah I think we'll not take watch. He yeah, sleeps. You, <laughs> okay. You are you are fairly certain that these that these hags have been the only pe- beings in existence to know about this thing in the last like millennium. Damn, so. okay. And the bone and the bone devil and the bone <laughs> yeah. devil. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if we if we turn on <laughs> see invisibility, the bone, devil the bone devil's sleeping in that bed right there. He's like, fine. <laughs> 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 Really, take a good nap. <laughs> you have any idea how bad the abyss is to get a nap in? <laughs> <laughs> Screaming so uh, He just so keeps teleporting back here. So I'll mention that, uh, just a quick rules uh, thing about the Hearthstone. None of us can actually use its abilities uh-huh. because we have to invest in it, and investing takes 24 hours. Hmm. So. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Sure, investing takes 24 oh. hours. Does it take 24 hours? It's a gemstone, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty cool it's, gemstone it's though. It's cool, and uh, it's it's got mystical properties for sure. So yeah. Like, so. yeah, I was gonna say because I know I mean it's worth quite quite a lot. E- even even inert, it's still worth quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you know that it's in that it's a uh, mm-hmm. investment? It's a, it has the trait invested. Oh, invested. Mm-hmm. I see it. I see that. Yep. Wow. So yeah, Sarah, guys, you actually you actually. We'll, we'll it, says, get that. it says the process requires one or more interact actions. Oh. Yeah, yeah ten. It says usually taking the same amount of time as it takes to don the item. Oh. I think I think, it just I, think takes certain, 24 hours. I think certain items say it takes twenty four hours. Oh. So certain magical yeah, certain things. Oh, okay. But I think All right. just, okay. Otherwise, it's just like putting it on. Right. Being like this is my thing. Okay. So, um, oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. I did not read the the, the active command here on or the active effect on the hearthstone. Hmm. Uh, activate uh, w- one action command. You must be touching the hearthstone. Effect the hearthstone attempts to counteract one disease affecting you. Wait, say that again. You, you the hearthstone, not you, yeah. but the hearthstone attempts to counteract one disease affecting you. Hmm. Quick. Counteract level five has got a modifier plus we eighteen. We need to get you oh, a nice disease in the next twenty-four hours, so we don't waste the item. <laughs> <laughs> get me a disease. Grab the rusty claws, stab him, give him lockjaw. Quick, go start killing the <laughs> dead hags. Just, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 we have to use it. But the funniest part about that is that it's still a dice roll, so you can still fail. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> also, um, you can you can cast um, Ethereal Jaunt. You can do Bind Soul at will, and then Shadow Blast twice a day. 
dude. Fuck yeah. I'm almost no. That that is that is for the night hag. Uh, allows the hag to use. No. Oh. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, little I boy. I want to use shadow blast. <laughs> There is a reason I did not I did not read that line. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. You cannot use ethereal jaunt at ninth level. Why not? But Jake, that's what the book says. <laughs> the book says I could do it. Well, if Tim looks so sad Wait, now. What, what, why can't I cast Bind Soul? What's wrong All with I need is Black <laughs> Sapphire. That's true. I just um, want my lawful good paladin we... to be able to bind souls. <laughs> after we sleep, uh, hey, nobody said nothing about me being lawful. After we hmm. sleep, uh, was there anything special about the the lower room where we fought the, the first hag? Oh, uh, this or one. Was was it just let like me read that one. <laughs> Not magical deads. It's just going back and forth between each room. Which bed's uh, more No, so let me let me l- let me just read you this one because this this one's interesting. So uh, long ago, up to five visitors at a time could rest here to re- to receive diverting but ultimately meaningless dreams as entertainment. Um. So the uh, the 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 hag's presence here has actually corrupted the area. So now they're just sort of uncomfortable. Um. So basically, it was just designed uh, so, to give you good dreams. Yeah, just fun dreams. It's sort of like a, a dream the, theater. Isn't there if something you will? in Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's pretty much like, it's pretty much like a dream theater thing. But um, uh, yeah. So I mean, that you 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 could it, it's been corrupted, but but the, the, that was the original intention. What if I flood cool. the room with good vibes? <laughs> Dang, I didn't think about that. Hold on, let yes. me read. I trumped you, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> we uncorrupted with good vibes. Yeah, it was good vibes. Good vibes only. Oh, see, there's a there's a there's a there's a footnote on this page. If the players use good vibes, it cures nice. it. Cool, that's neat. God, I'm wow. smart, and I've big Pines and thinks of everything. Kendrick <laughs> gets the, <laughs> thinks gets of the it boom all. box out and just starts blaring Electric Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> God, we are stupid. I'm stupid. I'm the stupid one. Let's be honest. <laughs> Take it. Hi. All right. Is everybody ready to go through the gate and find out what what's Let's on the go. other side of the stupid thing? But Jake, what dreams did we have in the other tree? Oh, under the uh, here. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you some dreams. Uh, give some good shit. Benson. Benson has 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 a wonderful dream where uh, he's. Uh, He's he's back home and he's sitting uh, comfortably um, in, in in his nice chair in his den in like the library and there's like you know like the bear rug uh, and he knows his mom will not talk to him the the entire oh, night. Oh God! He's he's just comfortable because he knows that she'll never come and bother him the whole time. It's too good. I don't want to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Elkwood, you, you you have very similar dreams that the, that you had um, when you were when you were at the the, the dream house, mm-hmm. um, in which you have that sort of like sense of like flying like through like a celestial forest of some kind, mm-hmm. um, that sort of sense of freedom that that that, that Elkwood sort of yearns for. Um, uh, Grimshaw, you you have a you have a a, a sense of. Um, you get you get sort of like a bird's eye view of like your like your home, um, and it, and it, and it's like shining and brimming, and you and you can you you had this like sense that it's like free, like it's like it like there's no more oppression, like it's gone, like your job is finished, um, and you just sort of have this like uh, it's like this weight off your back, um, and uh, Kezer, you are also flying, but you feel this like immense power behind you as you. As you're flying through the air, and you can sort of feel feel yourself with this like immense weight and power and strength behind you, um, and there's a there's a storm flying with you as you as you go over cities and mountains. Nice, that's nice. I just kind of uh, want to be like, <laughs> it'd just be like Hezra's going like, oh, you're burning all those cities, and people are just bowing out of fear and respect. <laughs> But yes, this is a good dream. <laughs> they all love and fear you. More fear you, really. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> all right. 
we had we had we talked about it in the beginning. So, what's that? What's everybody's bet through through the store? Tim, were you were you on ice? Were you in like Linarm King's Tundra, or were you uh, somewhere else where the t- triad was? So my bet, Linarm Kings, going to the land of Linarm. No, no, no. Uh, in character, it's a it's a, a Scarlet Triad hideout. hideout. Okay. Yep. So I'm ready. I got my shield out. I got my mace out. I'm like, we don't know what's on the other side, but we gotta be ready. I feel like a million bucks. I mean, a million gold pieces after that nap. <laughs> uh, what was the name of the largest city? I think it started with an A. Absalom. 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 I think Absalom. we're gonna be in like some dingy, ancient basement Absalom. I think we're going from the deserted jungle to the most populated area of the world. Oh, oh God. That would make sense. I'm gonna go desert. I'm gonna go like Osirian or something. I like it. And I'll go uh, probably should, like something near the water, like my shackles or something. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Timmy had said the the uh, I have a Bendigo. Yeah. Oh, I, I said. Um, yeah, or, or, Mark, oh, yeah. you said that. Never mind. Um, All right. Okay. All right. So it just goes to the bottom. You guys. <laughs> It's fuck. Just, <laughs> oh, fuck, we're all drowning. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pressure is immense where bones are crushed. Um, the Titanic? Right. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> no! <laughs> Way to date the episode. Uh, it's, uh, uh, well, it's weekly episodes. That might still be relevant at this point. Yeah, maybe. Um, as you guys step through, uh, you touch the... Um, the eclipse, mm-hmm. and you turn it like a key or like, like, like a crank, and it chick, 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 and it and the wall and the the opaque portal door comes up, um, and you are able to. Walk uh, Benson through. is going to step forward and go. May I? Yes, of course. Go ahead. Literally, he's holding his shield up, and he just starts walking forward. <laughs> Yeah. See, I was, I was hoping Jing, Grimshaw Jing. was also going to walk at the same time, and they just keep bumping into each other. Like, uh, sorry, uh, excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's just no, me. stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> no, no, wait, you, you hold your shield up a bit, and I'll hold mine lower, <laughs> and then we can kind of fit in the no, same no, spot. No, no, an angle, catty corner, the... Yeah. Pivot. <laughs> Wedge formation. <laughs> Fair uh, You step through. And as you all step through, you enter a cavern that's about 30 feet in diameter. And it appears to be dripping uh, with, like, sort of a, uh, like a, like a mist, like a sort of dew. Ooh. Like there's a, like a, like a constant, uh, uh, like a, a, a constant bit of moisture uh, just sort of, like, builds up. Um, and there's a single exit to the north that you can hear the crashing waves. <gasps> oh, man. Was a and the water right. hitting the surface. Give me 50 bucks. I got this shit. <laughs> I mean, 50 gold pieces. All right. Uh, moving forward. Either way. Uh, as you begin moving forward. Mm-hmm. You see that the cave's exit... Uh, it emerges on the side of a seaside cliff. It is 50 feet up mm. from the buff below. Um, 50 feet, you say? <laughs> uh, yeah, f- 50, 50 feet up to the up to the bl- oh, sorry, sorry, 50 feet up to the bluff above you, and then 30 feet down to a rocky beach below. And that's where you see the waves just like bombarding the rocks on the bottom. Oh, just jumps down. <laughs> And there's a, is there any apparent way down, or is it just a sheer fifty foot drop? Sheer, sheer mm-hmm. drop. Yeah, honestly, it is a it is a cliffside, as as I say that verbatim. Yeah. Obviously, will, Elk does he'll, like he inspects. Kesra will, t- uh, yeah, he'll do it. Detect, ma- detect uh, magic while Elkwood inspects. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go, go ahead and, and make me a, a perception, perception check I, I, as you, to, to like to like look for a way down. Okay, I will do one as well. Okay, not bad. Um, Man, shit, yeah, Pearl Kesra. Glad none of this is important. 
21 Let's see. for Benson. 30 exactly. 32 if it's an initiative. <laughs> it's not an okay. initiative. Shit. <laughs> um, I want to fight. Uh, Benson, that, that, that's that's pl- plenty to, to as you as you sort of look over. By mind you, elk just dropped, so you're just like, oh, well, <laughs> that's nice, that's fine. Uh, but <laughs> the, the three of you look over, and it, it, well, while it looks sheer at first, you can see that there are what there are sort of um, uh, you know there's like there's like cliffs in like a. Uh, uh, like Great Britain or like the like the British mm. Isles and stuff like that. How sheer they sort of have things. like jagged, yeah. Wow. But they're sheer, but they do have like sort of jagged jagged spots mm-hmm. that stick mm-hmm. out. Um, and you could use those as, as footholds. Um, so it's not it's not a perfect, but you could use that with a with a decent a decent athletics check in order to climb down. All right, Are we climbing down or do we want to climb up? Oh, I guess it? climb up would be better. To be honest. Yeah, what happens if we so, look up? Uh, if you look up, you can see the that it's fifty feet up to the to the the top of the cliff. Fifty feet up or thirty feet down? Well, down is just rocks. <laughs> down, down is just wet yeah. rocks. Yeah. So there's nothing down there. That wet boulders. I need to be clear. Wet boulders. Yeah. <laughs> like at, with the thirty perception, like was there anything that I could have saw down there? I mean, because I didn't actually jump down there. I was making more of a joke about it, but no, no, no. You're fine. No. So, so yeah. I mean, you, you look down and it, it looks like just giant boulders that looks like they've been uh, run over with mm-hmm. waves many, many times. So late. So they look. They, a lot of them look very smooth okay. and nice. Off it is, I guess. Can I see? Okay. Can I see? Uh, the edge of the cliff at the top. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you sort of poke your head and look up, yeah, yeah, you you, you, you can see the edge of it. It's it, like I said, it's fifty right. feet up to the to the cliff above. I have a wand of dimension door. Oh, oh fuck! That's right. Oh, ah, nice. Now I you know what would be I perfect. Probably, I wouldn't be able to land, Jake. but I could I could attempt to teleport up and grab the edge. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You have to see where you're going. Yeah, I wouldn't get like Shit. yeah. Um, let's see. I don't have any. You could take somebody with you. I was gonna right? say, d- does I, no. Ah, dimension no. door doesn't work that way. This one, unfortunately. Uh, I, I'm, I'll say this. Get, get in. The way that you use dimension door is this something where you teleport all at once, or is it sort of like portals? Like from from the game Portal, where you can kind of like put your hand through and like. No, I believe it touch. is. Touch. Okay. It's teleportation. Uh, it's more of like teleport. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Because I. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up the actual. Well, if you do that, I don't see that how that helps us. We still have to make the climb. I could lower a no, rope he's just going to help you climb. Start. True. Oh, your rope. I think we all have rope. Yeah, That's yeah, very I, true. I have, now that I think about it. I have 50 feet of rope. I have 50 feet of rope as well. Same. If we combine them. If you combine damn it, Jake. It, it's 95 feet. <laughs> <laughs> if we combine them. Um, yeah. If, Do you uh, have the skill to tie the rope? I have a good athletics, so grabbing the edge shouldn't be too much of a... too difficult. Um... Be prepared for. <laughs> be prepared for a natural one. I I'm being prepared for a natural one. We we already know what falling damage is like. <laughs> yep. Benson, hold out your arms. Let's see what other things I have. look out to my inventory. I have random scrolls and shit too. <laughs> Got the rod of wonder. Hmm. <laughs> just wave that and see what shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> <The rod of wonder. laughs> just see what happens. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a hundred percent confidence that'll work. We'll just pray. <laughs> oh my god, there's a tree in our way. Um, <laughs> it could be spider climb. Could get spider climb, who knows? Could, could, could get spider climb. You know what would be really great? Uh, is uh, ascend, uh, Ascension from uh, Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom, oh, yeah, this right would be the the perfect opportunity for that. <laughs> you just... Alright, well I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Dimension Door to the cliff top. Okay. Um, all right, so you use Dimension Door. I'm just going to ask you for an athletics check in order to, like, grab the edge as you as you sort of pop out. 
to be able to like pull yourself up to the top. I have very good athletics. God, I, ro I rolled a six three times today. Stop it. Um, but, Stop uh, it. Actually, act actually, the grab and eggs is a reflex save. Is it reflex? Tim? Yeah, but the, uh, the, it, 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 it's athletics to climb this, so that's where, I'm, that's where I'm pulling this from. So first you do the reflex save to grab the edge, and then you once you grab a hold of the edge, then you climb up with using athletics. See, so there's mm. two checks you got to yep. pass. So it is a it, yeah. yeah. There's a reaction, a, a standard reaction called grab an edge. All right, so I will do that. Yeah. yeah my reflex is okay. It's an old reflex. Hmm. I rolled a seven this time, so that will be a. Uh, oh. uh, Twenty-four. It's at. Uh, sorry, what, what was the it's DC? At the climb I mean, DC of just climbing the wall. Yeah, it's just it's, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't actually be that hard, unless it was like a particularly slippery. Oh, wall I got you. Or okay. Something, but yeah, twenty-four. Uh. Uh, okay, so you yeah, so the no, no so the, it was a it was a I'll tell you it's a DC eighteen athletic check oh. to climb this. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so yeah, you you step out and it's slippery, but you manage to, to get a good grab, uh, and then and then you and then you find yourself stable at the top of this cool. cliff. And then I critically succeeded on the athletics to pull myself up, so I do not fall. There you go. Cool. Uh, before I before I lower the rope down. Do I see anything dangerous, or do I see anything? Nope, it's a big old cliff. Well, what's, so. be, what's beyond the cliff? Is, there, is it a forest? Uh, is it a I will is tell you that a, when you get your whole party up. <laughs> uh, it's a humongous coastline that you can see. It's, it's a big a coastal giant, coastline. Grassy coastline. Mm, yeah. Uh, when you get your party up, I will I will explain where okay. you guys are. Uh, I like drop it. the I drop the rope. Um, I believe climbing a rope is like a DC ten or fifteen or something. Yeah, yeah which you, I, I, I I don't think you guys. Can regardless, fail Benson's that. going to stand <laughs> so. at the bottom and insist everyone else go up in case he needs to catch somebody. <laughs> yep. Okay. Fair. <laughs> Uh, you all make your way up to the top, and you climb the 50 feet, pulling and dragging yourself, and you all pull each other up, and you stand atop the cliff, and you look out, and you realize that you are standing just below the streaming sea. Streaming sea. And as you look down the coastline, you can see off in the distance a major enormous oh, city shit. the Grimshaw goes I'm home huh. Kentargo oh. lays in the distance <laughs> no way shining as a beacon of light on the horizon oh, by the gods Holy oh, shit. Shit. we were just gonna walk here it's full of stars <laughs> we were just gonna walk there <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> That's so crazy. Jake's like, no, 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 don't walk, please don't walk there. Jake's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> the book did not pay for that. Don't walk. I just want to catch it. What's going on, everybody? This is Timmy from the Dragon Punch Squad podcast. You may also know me as the voice of Adelar Vaynor, cleric of Avatar. You might not know, but we are all over the internet. We have a Twitter, at Dragon Punch Pod, Facebook, Dragon Punch Squad Pod, and Instagram, Dragon Punch Squad. If you want to join our fantastic Discord, full of great people, supportive, budding GMs, players, got discourse, add us on Twitter for an invite link and we'll be sure to get you in. Also, speaking of our Twitter, we have a link tree that links to all of our 
links to, you know, the Facebook, the Instagram, everything. Oh, yeah. And did you know we have merch? DragonPunchSquadMerch.com. We got anything you could ever want. We got hats. We got shirts. We got mugs. You want it? It's there. Also, if you, there's something that you want that's not there, just shout us out. We could probably get it in the shop. And finally, be sure to spread the goodness of the DPS to your friends and family. Word of mouth. Also, leave us a five-star review on the podcasting app that you use. That helps us a ton for discovery so that other people can hear the Dragon Punch Squad podcast. All right, that's enough of that. Keep punching, punchers.